folks. My name is Lily from Nay Ceramics and today in the studio we're going to be glazing this bad boy. So this is a vase I made a while ago. Um, it's one of my favourite um, sort of vessels to make. I make them in two parts and I usually make um, a few different sort of bodies and a few different um, necks and then I put them together and I sort of play with them. Um, with the forms and stuff. So it's like a little puzzle, I guess, of pots that I can make. I call it my Florence series. It was um, inspired from when I went to a trip to Florence and I was going around all the museums and the art galleries and stuff and I was really awed by the, the antique um, pots that were all over the place and I thought they were very beautiful. So yeah, I came home and sort of made some of these more classic shapes that have existed for thousands of years uh, and I made them in kind of my style and my clay um, with my glazes and things so that was kind of my take on something that's very traditional. So this one um, is a favourite from the last batch that I did and I think it's probably the tallest guy um, that I've made in this series. Um, this particular Florence vase is going to be for my sister for her birthday so um, I have had it kept aside for ages, um, kind of worrying about it on my shelf. But today is the day that I am going to be glazing it and I thought, hey, it's a good idea to show you guys. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be filling the inside up with glaze and then pouring that out. And then I'm going to use this kind of setup here with my um, banding wheel, a larger pot, and then inside the pot I've got a bowl. Um, I'm going to be putting this on here and then pouring glaze onto the outside. Usually I would dip if I am making something like a cup or a bowl or something like that that can fit into the glaze bucket then I would just dip it. But um, this guy obviously is too big and I don't have a bucket that would fit um, a pot this size so we are going to be pouring it. This guy I glazed in a very similar way. So I had it on um, kind of a wider bucket. And I had, I glazed the inside of it and then I turned it over and had it on some stilts on the, um, the wider bucket. And then I put this guy upside down and I poured the glaze um, in the same way. So I could do that. Um, the method would be the same for this guy but it just worries me the taller it gets kind of the more unstable it is. So I am kind of opting to go inside of this pot just in case um, it wobbles a little bit <laughs> and goes off balance. So let's get started with uh, what we are going to be needing. So uh, you need glaze, you need something to mix your glaze with, you need water and you need some sponges and you need a banding wheel. This is actually a cake turner, it's not a banding wheel, just um, if you want to get yourself a cheaper <laughs> situation, I got this guy from eBay. You need a larger sort of wide bucket um, that's going to be wider than your pot and you also need either something to go in it, I'm going to be using the underside of the bowl. The reason I'm using a bowl is because it's going to sit on there like that and there's going to be no glaze pooling as I pour the glaze. Um, Otherwise, if it was just sort of on the surface of the inside of this pot while it was turning, I'm going to be pouring the glaze and it's just going to be pooling here. So this area would have really thick glaze and this would be thinner. So you need something to um, have the glaze run off or you can use the stilts as I mentioned before. So you also need your pot um, that you're going to be glazing. I'm using my chalk glaze. It's a really beautiful um, kind of creamy off-white um, matte glaze. It's one of my favourites. The different areas where the glaze is thicker, it um, goes a little bit more white and then the other areas is kind of a greeny um, cream. It's a very interesting colour. It's my favourite. So let's start off by giving our glaze a good mix. This guy won't quit turning. Another really important uh, thing that you need, I 
as you're preparing is a um, measuring jug or something that you can pour your glaze with. So I'm going to be using this guy. So I've mixed the glaze really well. Um, I mixed it for a minute or so. Glaze the inside of the pot first. So that's the inside done. It'd be easier if we were done now, but we're not. So the reason that I'm spinning um, the pot as I pour it out is just to coat the entirety of the inside of the vessel. Um, if something is going to be used for water, especially if it's um, an earthenware or a lower fired clay, you really want to make sure that the entire inside is um, glazed so that you can get it as close to watertight as possible. I'm using stoneware and it's a really high fire clay so it does vitrify without the um, use of glaze but it is, it's just nice to make sure it's all nice and glazed. Next stage now is the more scary part so I'm going to set up this kind of intricate contraption. Okay so this seems very precarious um, and it, honestly it feels quite precarious <laughs> um, but it's a much better option than painting it. I find that painting things, um, especially with my glazes, um, you kind of miss spots and I like a thicker um, kind of application, especially with this glaze. So it is, you know, I'm just going to risk it for a risk it. Okay, so that process is quite nerve-wracking. It's a lot easier with a um, sort of straight-sided vessel like this guy. Um, I am definitely going to flip it over and do the underside soon. You just have to be careful when you're doing that because obviously we have a lip here with, um, that's already been glazed, so you don't want to get too much glaze on this area. So uh, as I said earlier, this glaze specifically looks really nice when it's thick. So I have glazed it quite thickly around here. So I'm just gonna wait for it to dry. I like it when there's these kind of areas of drips with this glaze. Um, it just makes for a quite nice, interesting texture. So I'm definitely gonna leave that. I am just gonna leave it to dry for a little bit so that I can pick it up without um, kind of distorting it. So down here, you can see it's a lot more wet. I am going to take it off this spooky little contraption though so that uh, while I'm waiting for it to dry it doesn't topple over. while it dries and then I'll come back to you in a moment to finish it off. OK, 
Okay, she has dried enough now. Um, so I need to now just quickly glaze the inside of the foot ring here. You can see that all the glaze has pulled on the foot ring, but there's none inside this little well, I guess. Uh, and I really like to glaze the inside of that as it, I don't know, just kind of is like a nice finishing touch. And then on the inside here um, of the lip, I am just going to turn the whole pot over and um, dunk it into the glaze bucket just to cover it up. And then I will kind of uh, let it dry again and fettle a little bit of glaze off the inside of this room so that there's not too much and I'll clean up the bottom as well. Stir this up again, it's been a few minutes since I've used it. I'm going to start with the inside of the foot ring and I'm just going to pour a little bit. This feels ridiculous. this dry and I will clean everything up. Oh. Right, I'm going to let everything dry for quite a while. I might come back later and just give this a dust. It could even be that I come back tomorrow and finish this piece off here. Um, I definitely won't be firing it today. I want the, um, the water to kind of evaporate out of the pot, otherwise it's just going to be loads of moisture in the kiln. Little baby. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours. I've had lunch, I've trimmed some pots. Um, and now we can see that the surface of this is much drier than it was earlier. So we can just go in here really gently. I've got dry hands. Really gently just kind of um, smooth this uh, rim out a little bit. Even better, I, I may do this tomorrow so that I can get it really nice and smooth. But honestly, this glaze is quite forgiving. Um, and it has a really nice melt, so I probably will be fine. And then we just have to clean up the bottom, so not great lighting. Um, the sun has gone down quite a bit, but we can see here that um, we need to clean all of this off the foot ring, otherwise it will melt and attach itself to the kiln shelf. This is the surface of the pot. And then that is the the lip, which looks really messy right now, but it can be um, cleaned up quite a lot. So I'm just going to clean this um, foot ring up by scraping this excess glaze back straight into the glaze bucket. Because there's so much here, I um, don't want to waste it. <laughs> uh, you can just go in straight in with a sponge, but um, you might as well kind of flake off some of this excess and you, you know, don't end up just wasting it. So when I am handling the glazed pot, I'm being really careful to not sort of, um, I don't know, like brush it, I guess. I am just kind of, when I'm holding it, I'm holding it in one spot and I'm not sort of moving my um, hands on it. If I were to um, kind of move my hands on the surface, I could very easily sort of peel some of the um, freshly glazed um, surface off of the pot. 
Okay, now I'm just going to go in with a sponge and take off all that extra glaze. A lot of people use wax resist um, on the areas of the pieces that will be on the kiln shelf where they don't want any glaze, but I find that using um, wax resist is just kind of like a waste of time for me. I really don't like using it. I find the smell of it when it is firing really gross and it gives me a bit of a headache. It's not great for you. Um, also, I don't know, I just find like you have to wipe the bottoms anyway. so. Um, you know, adding another step in painting wax resist on kind of seems pointless to me. Very much, um, you know, each their own though. I don't care when people do it, I just don't do it myself. This area of glaze is really thick, so I'm just taking some of this off. Here she is, my beautiful big old baby. So I'm gonna load her into the kiln now and I'll be back in a couple of days when um, she's been through the firing, through the pits of hell. And we'll see how she comes out. So here she is out of the kiln. It's been three days since I glazed her and the kiln has gone up to um, 1,265 degrees Celsius. So that's um, between cone eight and nine uh, for those of you who are cone people. I'm really happy with it. I really like the way um, that there's sort of different textures going on where it's thicker and thinner. Um, these kind of glassy areas around the neck I think are really cool. Uh, yeah, so. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you have learned something. I hope that you have enjoyed it. And I will see you again for more chill ceramics content. See you later.